please feel free to support the channel that way. Uh, and big news. We got the shirts. We got the shirts printed. The uh, Too Tall Toby. This one says technical tips and tricks. We should go to full screen for this, right? Technical tips and tricks. Too Tall Toby shirts are available. Uh, and you can order these over. You can order these over at the merch shop at uh, twotalltopy.com. It's a little bit funky, the order form right now. We're trying to get a smoother order form, so consider this kind of like a beta experience. Uh, Ow! All right, so uh, let's talk about this model here. I think you guys are going to think this is cool. I think there's some pretty cool lessons to learn from this model here, and we're going to do it the, the difficult way, and then we're going to do it the easy way. So if anybody wants to follow along with and you want to grab a screen capture, feel free to do so. And I think you guys are going to think this is pretty cool, uh, both the difficult way and the easy way. So what you can see here is that uh, we've got this model and that the model uh, looks like it's pretty easy. Looks like this is going to be a piece of cake, right? And so we jump into it. We start modeling. We think to ourselves, like starting plane, starting profile. Well, I think top plane and we create this shape as our starting profile. And this is the origin. So I think that's, that's like a pretty obvious way to start. And I'll probably bring that up to this height here, the 1.5. And then I will figure out how to create the rest of this geometry you know, it's kind of weird. It's almost like uh, it could be an extrusion, uh, but it could also be maybe a loft. Like maybe I could loft between these two uh, to create that that transition up to that upper shape. And then all I got to do is just get rid of this interior geometry and I'm like pretty much good to go. So, yeah, I mean, that looks that looks pretty easy to me. It doesn't look like there's really too much uh, as far as the challenge goes. So let's get into it here and see see what that actually ends up looking like, because what you'll learn uh, if you're still watching is that it's not that easy. There's like all kinds of weird stuff that happens with this model. So we're going to go top plane, begin a sketch, orient the view, S key, rectangle. We're going to make this 18 by um, 14 and we're going to S key extrude up to a height of 1.5 so far so good now we're going to select the top plane hold control and drag and we'll drag a new plane up to seven inches pick that plane begin a sketch orient the view S key rectangle and we're going to make that at uh, let's see here this one is three plus one plus one <laughs> and seven plus one plus one so nine by five Okay, so it's like it's we're already getting into some kind of weirdness because this is dimensioned very weird. Three plus one plus one and seven plus one plus one. So kind of a weird whatever. We can get through it, no big deal. Not n n no problem for us, right? Us pros. So we're gonna go here to um, uh, S key extrude and we're gonna bring that down to a height of seven minus five point five, so it's gonna go down to a height of one point five. Uh, so there we go. So that's our first two. And then, like I said, I mean, if you're not really sure how to do this next feature, you probably could just do it as a loft. You could probably just loft from here to here, you know, as long as you know kind of what, what that shape is supposed to be. It certainly would work. But at this point, it's like, hold on a second. Things are getting weird. Like, normally, we wouldn't have this level of complexity in a Too Tall Toby practice model. So why is this one so weird? And beyond that, like how are we supposed to know where uh where this loft is even supposed to like start and end like those dimensions aren't really called out it's not it's not obvious where that uh, start end is i guess it would be this right the 10 by 14 here on the bottom so i guess that's going to be our loft start end so what do we have to do we have to do a split line I guess. Okay, let's do it. You know, like we, this is a, this is, you guys can see it's kind of starting to get a little bit weird here. Uh, so, okay, let, let's try it. So we go 10 by 14 and then we go features curve split line. You know, that's not one that we would normally use in these challenges, but okay, we can do it. All right, now we have a split line there. Um, view, display, tangent edge is visible. So you can see that split line. Features, loft, and we could do a loft here to loft this shape into this shape. And all right, that wasn't too bad. There we go. Now we have that outer shape. Let's go. Let's keep modeling here. Let's get this inside shape now. So now how do we get this inside shape? Well, the first part of the inside shape looks like it's just a cut extrude rectangle at three inches by seven inches. Okay, so that's, you know, that's something that I think that we can handle here. So we pick this face, begin a sketch, orient our view, create our rectangle here at seven inches by three inches, S key extrude cut, right mouse button through all, right mouse button, there we go. Now we have that cut extrude going down through for our first shape. But then what about this additional geometry? Like this is at 1.25 uh, for the wall thickness there. Well, this wall thickness is at 1.5, so a shell isn't gonna work. It's not like I can just rip up there and do a shell. 
So how am I going to get that shape at 1.25? And this is where things get really dicey. Um, you could maybe try to do it with a cut extrude and go offset from surface. That's probably where I would start. And then if that doesn't work, you might have to get, actually get in and do some surfacing type stuff. So we go uh, front plane, begin a sketch, orient our view, and then let's view this thing in uh, for construction. And so we're going to have a, a line here like this. It's going to connect and it's going to be parallel. So, whoops, not cut linear. Parallel. And then we're going to make that at uh, 1.25. Okay, so all right, that, that looks like it'll probably work. Um, we can do a construction line here, and then we could do another line like so, and then another line over here like so, and then we can mirror that. All right, that looks like it'll probably work. And then we could do extrude cut offset from surface, and that offset is going to be 1.25 on the other end as well, and it's going to be offset from this surface here. Okay, that looks good. And we can actually have that offset from surface on the other side as well. So we'll go direction two, offset from surface, uh, 1.25 offset from this surface here. And there we go. It's just that easy, right? Uh, <laughs> that seems like a lot of uh, weirdness for this being a uh, too tall Toby model. I mean, let's see if we even got it right. So if we go evaluate mass properties, 16.8 uh, pounds. And then if we look at this guy here and we go into this, um, did we get it right? Yes, we got it right. 16.8. Okay, cool. We did it. So that definitely would work. Um, but when, and it's funny, like I did kind of all this, uh, you know, SolidWorks gymnastics when I was going through and auditing this part. And then I looked at my original part and what I realized was this is just a sweep profile here. Like if you just do this as a sweep profile, actually this as a sweep profile, that's all you need to do. You can do this whole thing in two sketches. So you can have that as a sweep profile, and then you could have this as a path up and over and down the rectangle. Whoops, sorry, I know it's off screen. Uh, you can have that as your path, and you're done. Just wipe your hands, and you're done. So the uh, you know the approach to the smart approach, the easy appro easier approach if you're paying attention would be to s select a plane, begin a sketch, uh, orient your view. But instead of doing that kind of top-down view of the um, of the uh, footprint of the part, what you could do is you could say, this is going to be my starting profile. My starting profile is going to look something like this. Actually, I'm sorry. That's bad advice. Whenever you do a sweep, you always want the path to be first. So it will still be that, uh, that footprint rectangle. So the 18 by 14 rectangle will still be your start. But instead of that being an extrusion, that will be your path. Always want to start with your path. And then you would go front plane, begin a sketch, orient your view, and you would begin creating your profile sketch. So the profile sketch is going to be a line that comes up here at 1.5 and then comes over, uh, goes up at an angle, comes straight up like so, comes over this way, one point, what is it, 1.0, uh, comes down like so, comes back this way parallel. So we'll make that parallel on one shot, actually all the way down, and then closes off like so. So now this is going to be pierced. You always want to remember to pierce when you're working with a sweep. Uh, this is going to be our total height here of seven. This is going to be our height to this point where we made our, uh, our second body the first time around. We were going the long way around. This is going to be our distance of 1.25 for that inside wall thickness. And finally, we're going to have maybe a center line if we just want to have the dimensions the same as the print. We have a center line here, and then we could do this distance to the center line, come across the center line, and make that three. And what are we missing here? An angle? No. That's got to be... Oh, there's another double dimension here. This over to here. That's doubled over to 10. And there we go. That is our profile. So path and profile. And um, when you go to sweep, if you pick your, your uh, stuff in the correct order, you pick the profile first and then the path, SolidWorks will automatically put them into the correct box. Also, if, the, if one of your sketches is open and the other one is closed, it will always put the closed one into the uh, profile box and it'll always put the open one into the path box. But in this case, they're both closed sketches, so you have to be a little more conscious if you're gonna pre-select. Otherwise, you could just wait until you get in this box and then select. So there we go, there's our sweep. I know it's got this weird seam here, 
I don't know, you know, what we could do about that. Maybe we could do. I know that sometimes if you do insert face delete, you can use insert face delete to actually delete those seams. See, there we go. Delete face got rid of that. So if we did like those, so you could do that if you were if it was really bothering you, you could maybe use delete face to go through and clean it up. Uh, but it shouldn't affect the overall mass. Let's go to evaluate mass properties, and there we go, 16.8, and that is the. Uh, Maybe like the smarter way to approach that, but it's one of those things where, you know, when you're looking at a model, if the model has all uh, essentially like prismatic shapes, you don't think to yourself like sweep. Oh yeah, I'm gonna use a sweep there. Yeah, that'll be a good spot for a sweep. But uh, you, wanna, you wanna always just take a minute and ask yourself like, is this the same? Is this 1.25 the same as this 1.25? Is this the same geometry here? You know, if, it, if it's all the same,